Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. My name is Imad. In this lesson, we're going to start looking at case three calculations. In other words, where objects go up from a certain height and they come back down, but they pass that height. Just as a quick recap, we looked at case number one and we said that was the drop case, right? And we said the drop case is where something is released with a zero velocity and then it falls down to the ground. And then we looked at case number two. We said case number two is I throw it up from a certain height and I let it come down to that exact same height. This was case two. In other words, same point of launch and same um, final point over there. Right. So now we're going to start looking at case number three. So in this lesson, I'm going to start talking about case three, right? And what does case three look like? Case three is, for example, let's say I'm taking, uh, let's say you standing on a building, right? And there's little Johnny. Johnny is standing at the building and he's got a tennis ball in his hand. Okay, there's Johnny's ball. Johnny decides what he's going to do is he's going to throw the ball up and then he's going to let the ball come down. He's not going to catch it, so he's going to throw it up. That ball goes up, all the way up, and then that ball comes down. Now, for the sake of what I mean here, that ball's going up and then it comes down and goes all the way down to the ground, we're going to assume that it comes down in a straight line and in that same straight line, it went up. Okay, this is an example of what I mean by case three over here. Similarly, uh, another example of what I mean by case three, let's just put three over there. Um, let me take, let me take some, no, 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 we've been doing a good job with black. Let's say uh, I got a black little box over there. Ooh. Okay, you know what? I think I can be a little bit more pro in this. Let's take They don't seem to have boxes. Nevertheless, okay. So what I'm going to do is let's draw a hot air balloon, and there's my hot air balloon, right? And here's the 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 balloon itself. There's my hot air balloon. As you can see, my balloon is there. Okay. And now again, we've got little Johnny. He's standing in the hot air balloon, and Johnny is over here, little blue man. Okay, and Johnny is trying to take photos with his camera. Johnny is taking photos with his camera, and there's his camera in his hand, right? Camera is almost as big as him. Okay, so anyway, he's standing there with his camera, and the hot air balloon is moving up. It is ascending with a velocity of, uh, let's say, 5 meters per second. It is moving upwards with a velocity of 5 meters per second. And Johnny is holding his camera. But Johnny was naughty. He didn't have a string or any grip to keep his camera on him in case it falls. And that's exactly what happened. His camera fell. Johnny's camera fell, causing the camera to first go up and thereafter come down. So if I take the camera here, the camera's motion goes up first and then the camera comes down to the ground. Okay? I don't think yellow is a good color. Let's just choose something else. Um, let's choose blue. Right, the camera goes up and then comes and it falls down to the ground. Now here's a trick question. Let's, let's ask ourselves a few things about this situation. Firstly, what is the speed or the velocity of the hot air balloon? So I'm just going to write that there. Hot air balloon. Uh, v of the hot air balloon is equal to 5 meters per second right upwards so that's something we are clear on the hot air balloon is going up at 5 meters per second the next question we need to ask ourselves is okay if the hot air balloon is moving up at 5 meters per second what is the speed or the velocity of Johnny okay and let's choose a different color quickly let's go let's go red there's very limited colors here the hot air balloon Johnny the velocity of Johnny is equal to 5 meters per second upwards as well, right? But why? Why is Johnny also moving at 5 meters per second? Well, it's simple, because he's inside the hot air balloon. So can you guess what is the velocity of the camera whilst it's still in Johnny's hand? 
it is 5 meters per second. Now generally the first question you are sometimes asked in these types of questions when you get a case for example with a hot air balloon or you're throwing it up um, where we have motion in the hot air balloon is that the velocity of the camera just after he drops it is equal to 5 meters per second upwards just after he drops it that is just after dropping and the, why is it just after dropping? Um, because if you remember correctly I said if I throw this thing up it reaches a maximum height and has to stop now your thing has to go down anything that you drop in mid-air while you're moving upwards will first go up slow down come to a complete standstill and at that point in time over there it will have V equal to zero its velocity will be zero meters per second over there once it reaches the zero meters per second it's going to start falling down so that very camera it is released at 5 meters per second because it will maintain the same velocity of the hot air balloon and then gravity will act upon it causing it to slow down and once it reaches the top it would have reached a zero velocity once it reaches that zero velocity it starts falling down and gravity acts in the same direction causing it to speed up and come to the bottom here with a velocity much greater than the velocity over here okay so that's an introduction to case number three Okay, we are going to start looking at how to break down examples thereof and how to start adding in the values. Okay, right, so let's just get our pen back. So let's see. Now, the model, we can say definitely it goes upward, it goes upward like so, right, and then it has to start coming down, and this is by separating the motions. Okay, now quick question I'm going to draw a line here again and let's just take a different color um, let's make that line black and say that that line over there is our ground that's the ground <coughs> okay let's start filling in some values here firstly either a hot air balloon situation or a situation where you're standing on a cliff there will be an initial velocity but we don't know its value the value will have a positive value because we said according to our system positive is upwards downwards is negative okay so this will be a positive value over there there will be a final velocity over here but it will be at the maximum height so it is zero meters per second gravity will act on the object which is minus nine point eight meters per second right time will have a positive value although we don't know the exact time and also uh, we're missing one more thing which as you guessed is the displacement which we will call delta y or delta x which will also be positive okay now when the object starts coming down what I'm doing with this case is I'm separating the motion I'm treating the object when I throw it up as one system of calculations and when it comes down all the way to the ground as another so over here vi is equal to 0 meters per second and over here v final is equal to some negative value gravity acts on the object negative 9,8 meters per second we don't know the exact um, so yes of course we know the gravitational acceleration minus 9,8 in the absence of air friction and then we don't know the time and that will have a positive value and then also delta y uh, will have a negative value because the shortest straight line from start to finish starts there comes down here in the downward direction okay so with all these questions you gotta get used to writing out a system drawing a diagram in the exact same way I'm drawing it filling in everything that you do know for example at the maximum height it's equal to zero everything that you do know for example that and also that and the zero velocity once it starts releasing itself and coming down again and then also gravitational acceleration be sure to always take care of your reference system okay that is very very important upwards is positive downward is negative or if you decide downward negative downward positive upward negative etc or whatever the question uh, asks you to choose as a reference system okay let's see how we can fill this in in terms of a combined motion calculation what exactly that means okay 
Right, so separate motion said we treat up as one motion and downward as another motion. There's the ground. We will consider that case 3A. Right, I'll consider the, down, the combined motion as case 3B. Okay, what do I mean by combined motion? Combined motion, I mean we are going to draw one diagram and then choose all our references according to exactly that. Okay, what I mean is I'm going to have V initial over here. Upward as positive, downward as negative. Some upward value there. My final velocity will be over here with a negative value because it's downward. This diagram says this is our initial velocity, this is our final velocity. We are now not breaking up the motion into upwards and downwards. We're considering the entire motion for the sake of our calculations. Then, uh, delta T or T for time is equal to some positive value. Gravitational acceleration acts on the object minus 9,8 meters per second. Right. And then, let's see, what else? Mm, what else? What, what, what am I missing? I'm missing something. V final V initial delta T. We are missing the displacement. And there's a reason I left it last is because our displacement is going to be the most important thing we are working with over here. Because we are looking at the displacement of the entire motion, we need to consider displacement from there right up until here. Okay? What is the meaning of displacement? If you remember, going back, we said, let's just choose a red pen. If you travel right around like this, you may have gone a certain amount of meters, but then your displacement is going to be the shortest straight line from there to there. Okay, from there to there. Okay, from the start to finish with a particular direction. In this case, the straight line is from there down to here. So that's going to be our delta y. It's going to be negative, but it will be this distance. It's not going to be that plus this. Rather, it's going to be just this distance. Okay, that's case 3a, case 3b. Let's go and get a quick recap of what we've seen here. We've said we are looking at separating the motions. Oh, let me go one, one complete slide back. Uh, right, yes. Case 3, case 3 was where you throw something up and it goes past the reference point of where you started down to the ground. Okay, similarly case 3 is if I have a hot air balloon and a guy is standing in the hot air balloon and you know, um, the hot air balloon is ascending upwards with a certain velocity and you, for example, have your camera in your hand, it falls out, that camera's motion first goes up, then it comes down. Why? Because initially it has the velocity of the hot air balloon. Gravity then acts upon it, causing it to slow down and reach a maximum height. Thereafter it starts coming down. And as it comes down, gravity also acts upon it, causing it to increase and you get a much greater velocity at the bottom. Okay. Then we said we can break it down into two motions, treat the upward motion as one motion, the downward motion as another, and fill in our values. Or we can do it in one calculation, where our V initial is over here, and our V final is over there. And then time, positive value, gravity is, uh, gravitational acceleration is constant, and our delta Y is this value over here. Most importantly, um, you've got to draw out both case 3A and 3B when you get a case 3 question and then we'll see how to answer questions in that regard. Here's a summary on the next slide. Okay, that was a mistake. Okay, as mentioned, here's the summary of our case 3 motions. Please pay attention to this and familiarize yourself with it.